Asia is not one homogeneous whole, rather it is an impossibly large, outrageous, diverse continent of countries and cultures. Asia's great strength is its greatest weakness. Its distinct peoples and unique viewpoints and values make the region dynamic, but its geographical, religious, linguistic and historical divides also present many challenges. When we drive across Asia, we find rich and we find poor. We need to find solutions. For too many people, their images of Asia are really shaped by the fancy uh, photographs that they might bring back from a vacation, or the images that they will see on the television or on TV of a shiny metropolis. But so much of Asia remains poor. The challenge for Asia today as Asia rises is how do they ensure that growing cities also mean growing livelihoods, growing jobs, growing economies that reaches more and more people. Corruption robbed the country. Transparency is the answer. Corruption is one of the biggest curses, worldwide speaking. Uh, often one doesn't like to talk about it, but the truth is uh, it happens everywhere, in the north, in the south, in the east and in the west. In emerging markets in particular, the temptation is there to abuse power, to get rich quick. Uh, and there are major, major uh, efficiency losses associated with corruption. Uh, be it 2% or more than that of GDP, I'm not surprised at all. In some other countries uh, in the world, uh, that figure may be twice as high. Uh, it's a curse, it's terrible. It distorts incentives, uh, it enriches those who abuse power, who are usually already in power. It usually is at the expense of the poor, the least powerful ones usually lose. Uh, it's also true that most everybody loses when it comes to corruption, except for those who are involved in corruption, they gain. Academics and authors, scientists and cultural mavens have their place. They quantify what the average person already innately knows. Asia is changing and it's affecting their lives. Infrastructure matters. Everywhere you go, India, Thailand, everywhere, they need good infrastructure. Be places like Japan, very, very advanced, but China, even in China they could do with better infrastructure, Thailand, all over the ASEAN, you know? Better infrastructure is really the key to getting the economy moving at the fast pace that we needed to, to keep up with consumption and demand. So I would say that this is really to the heart and essence of working in Asia. AEC countries need to is infrastructure uh, improvement. Uh, Singapore, okay. But like Thailand, Indonesia, traffic jam is one of the issues, and some of the countries, uh, power generation is one of the issues. Uh, those infrastructure has to be improved, uh, that's what they needed, uh, including transportation too. Transportation means like good transportation between Thailand, Vietnam, or between Myanmar and Thailand, by having good connection, well completed transportation, the industry uh, may enjoy the benefit uh, supply chains. So Myanmar, companies in Myanmar can enjoy the good supply chain in Thailand, or companies in Vietnam can enjoy supply chain from Thailand, because Thailand is one of the best supply chain uh, established country for Japanese manufacturing industry. Economic growth creates winners and losers. A larger lifestyle generates a bigger environmental footprint and our globalized world can kill local cultures. Growth always impacts the environment. We always have to remember this. As Asia has grown economically, Asia sadly has also grown more polluted. From its use of coal polluting the skies to dirty beaches awash with garbage, this remains a critical challenge for Asian nations today. As Asia has grown more polluted, there's been more and more talk of green economies and green cities. Everyone wants a greener Asia, but it seems no one wants to pay for it. Cleaner energy means higher cost is the reality. A greener Asia ultimately will be everyone's goal, but it's gonna take time. Without uh, paying attention to the impact on the environment, the degradation of the environment, you are uh, uh, creating social problems, migration, poverty, uh, in some cases,
tensions and violence. So very divisive in, in, in the countries, in the societies. So we subscribe to the idea that uh, we have to pursue sustainable growth, and that is whatever is being invested, you have to be very careful that you are not going to have a negative impact on your environment. Whatever is going to be a, an industry that you want to establish anywhere, you must be careful that the people around the area will have their say, will have their participation, will have their contribution. So far, I think uh, the landscape has been rather open. There is this um, culture of consultation. There is this interactive process. And uh, I think member states are quite serious about uh, environmental impact uh, assessment. Asia is changing. It's growing, expanding, and exploding. Sometimes there are just not enough adjectives to describe the monumental transformation. But Asia is not just about numbers. Behind the headlines are people, everyday people. They are living, they are enjoying the process and wondering what it'll mean to them. And this is a good question for everyone to ask, since the changes in Asia won't just affect people in Thailand or Malaysia, China or Japan. No, the changes will impact everyone in the world. In this ancient land, I see the future. This is our time. This is Asia rising. 